This is part 32 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss the different message exchange patterns that are available in WCF. Message exchange pattern describes how the client and the WCF service exchange messages between them. Here is the list. Request reply, one way, duplex. The default message exchange pattern is request reply. Let's understand these message exchange patterns with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have a simple WCF service project and if you look at the service contract we've got two operation contracts here and if you look at this operation contract here you know notice that we haven't used any parameters but if you look at this operation contract we are saying is one way equals false okay now what is the message exchange pattern for this operation contract? It's request reply because the default message exchange pattern is request reply. And what is the message exchange pattern here? Here also it's request reply. So basically we use this parameter that is is one way parameter of the operation contract attribute to specify the message exchange pattern. And when we say is one way equals false, then the message exchange pattern is request reply. The default is also false for this parameter, which means irrespective of whether we specify this parameter or not, in both of these cases, the default message exchange pattern is request reply. If you want it to be one way, then simply set it to true. We'll discuss one way message exchange pattern in our next video. So what is this request reply um, you know, message exchange pattern going to do? You know, as the name suggests, the client makes a call to the service and then it simply waits for the service to return a response back okay so during that wait period the client stops processing and it is blocked okay so the client makes a call waits for the response to come back from the WCF service so there is a request and there is a reply so that's why it's called request reply message exchange pattern let's see how this operation contracts are implemented so within this file sample service.cs if you notice this request reply operation is straightforward. You know, the first line is we are capturing the start, I mean, date and time at that point when this line executes. And then we are making this thread that's executing, you know, the request sleep for two seconds. And then after that, we are again capturing the current date and time at that point. And then ultimately, we are subtracting the start date from the end date and computing the time, I mean, basically the difference between the two dates in seconds and then converting that to a string. So that number is then appended to this text right here. And then that's what is returned to the client. And look at the return type here, it's string. And what are we doing within this operation contract? We are simply throwing a not implemented exception. So straightforward WCF service here. And we have hosted this WCF service in a console application. And here is the configuration of the WCF service. And if you look at the binding at the moment, we are using net TCP binding. Okay, so we have discussed hosting WCF service in the previous sessions of this video series. So if you're new to hosting, please watch those videos. So let's go ahead and run our host. So the host is running. And I have also implemented a client application for this WCF service and it's a Windows application so basically I have added a service reference to the WCF service and then if we look at the form we have got a list box control and then three button controls here and if you look at um, you know the clear button it should be straightforward all we are doing here is clearing the items within the list box and if you look at this request reply operation click event handler what is this doing this is basically invoking the request reply operation of the WCF service and where is this client created so if you look at this at the class level um, you know we have specified a reference variable for our sample service client and within the constructor of this form so basically when the form is loaded we are creating an instance of the proxy class okay so what are we doing within the click event handler straightforward to the list box we are adding this string so basically um, the start and date time immediately when the user clicks the button we are adding that string to the list box and then look at this we are disabling the button control itself just before we are invoking the WCF service method and then once we get a response from the WCF service we are we are enabling it immediately 
and then we are appending basically adding this line of text you know with the date and time stating that request reply operation is completed to the list box and finally an empty string so straightforward code there and if at all if there is any exception uh, we are displaying that exception message within a message box and let's quickly look at you know request reply operation throws exception again you know straightforward it's very much similar um, but here we are invoking the request reply operation throws exception method okay all right let's go ahead and run the client so now if you look at this request reply operation within the WCF service what is it doing it is basically blocking for two seconds so when we click this button what is going to happen the client is going to make a call to this WCF service method and then it is going to wait so the client is basically going to wait until a response is received from the WCF service so there is a request from the client and the client waits for the WCF service call to complete and then return so there is a request there is a reply and hence the message exchange pattern is called as request reply um, message exchange pattern so look at this when we click this button Look at that, the button is disabled and it's waiting the, um, you know, the client processing is stopped and it's waiting for the response to come back from the WCF service, okay? And one very important thing we have to keep in mind is that, look at this, this WCF service method return type here is string, okay, means, you know, the method is going to return something back. So we, we, we are going to use that in the client application some way or the other, okay? So there's something for the WCF service method to return okay but just imagine what's going to happen if you think you know the return type is void and if this method is not going to return anything even then okay you know the message exchange pattern here is request reply so even if the return type is void the client still waits for the response to come back an empty response will be returned so until then the client is waiting you know the processing is suspended on the client and it's waiting for the call to return upon you know the call when it returns from the WCF service that's when it will resume processing the rest of the lines okay so basically what happened when we click that button you know just before calling that request reply operation we are disabling the button control that's why you saw it as disabled and it got enabled only after the call returned from the WCF service. All right, now let's go ahead and click this button and see what's going to happen. So when we click this button, it's going to call request reply throw operation exception, which is going to throw an exception. So now there is an exception. So in request reply message exchange pattern, if at all if there are so false or exceptions, you know, when WCF service methods are invoked, those will get re returned immediately on the same call to the client okay the reason it's very important we understand that is because in one-way message exchange pattern the false and exceptions doesn't get reported straight away to the client we'll discuss that in our next video session but for now understand that within request reply operation um, you know message exchange pattern the false and exceptions get reported to the client uh, you know on the same call right away if there are any okay so let's kick click this and see what's going to happen look at that the method or operation is not implemented that's the actual exception that has occurred on the WCF service and that's a dot net exception so if you look at the WCF service so throw not implemented um, exception so this is a dot net exception it's not handled and if there is a non handled exception what's going to happen you know it's going to fault the channel the communication channel between the client and the WCF service we discussed this in our false and exceptions uh, video series in the previous sessions of this video series okay so when the communication channel is faulted we cannot use the same instance of the proxy class for communication between the client and the WCF service anymore so now when we click this button we're going to get you know that exception the communication object cannot be used for, for communication because it's in faulted state okay and this happens especially when there are sessions involved okay so if there are sessions the the channel gets faulted and as a result we cannot use the same instance of the proxy class anymore for communication between the client and the WCF service so 
Here are the points that we need to keep in mind about request reply message exchange pattern. This is the default message exchange pattern. Client sends a message to a WCF service and then waits for a reply. During this time, the client stops processing until a response is received from the WCF service. The client is going to wait for the service call to complete even if the operation return type is void, irrespective of whether it is void or if the WCF service is actually returning anything, if the message exchange pattern is request reply, the client you know, is going to make a call and wait for a response to come back. All WCF bindings except the MSMQ based bindings support the request reply message exchange pattern. In a request reply message exchange pattern, faults and exceptions get reported to the client immediately if there are any and we use this parameter of the operation contract attribute to specify the message exchange pattern. Basically, if we set it to false, that means it's request reply. Irrespective of whether you set it or not, you know, the default value for that parameter is false. So both of these declarations here are equivalent. If we want the operation contract to be one way, um, then you simply set that parameter to true. We'll discuss one way uh, message exchange pattern in our next video. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.